meeting in April, what's the date, 18th, 2015, regularly scheduled Midland Public School Board of Education meeting. At this time, if everyone would turn off their cell phones, and I don't mean turn off the ringer, I mean turn them off, I appreciate it. It actually interferes with the television feed. And if you would all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. Uh, President Branstad. Here. Vice President Singer. Here. Treasurer Wasserman. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Frazee. Here. Member Gordon. Here. Everybody's here. Thank you. <coughs> Moving into the consent agenda. Item 6.1 is approval of our regular meeting minutes from our March 21st, 2016 board meeting. Item 6.2 announces um, a few staff members who um, have submitted their resignations. 6.3 is staff development proposals, and these were 16 proposals were um, presented at our March 26th board meeting for consideration. 6.4 is the LED scoreboard for the swimming pool at Dell High School. Um, funds being paid for with a grant from the Michigan Baseball Foundation and through <coughs> club money. 6.5. Bids have been accepted, tabulation provided for a new um, cooling coil and pumps for the an air handler at HH Dow High School. 6.6 .6, um, for a new swim, um, the new swimmer lift. 6.7 um, renewing our contract with Windstream Communications of Greenville, South Carolina. 6.8 extension of our current contract with the Contracts Paper Group of Uniontown, Ohio. Um, everyone knows that. We spend $56,000 a year for paper. <laughs> I just find that amazing. Um, 6.9 is disapproval of our bills for the month of January. 6.10 is approval of our bills for the month of February. And 6.11 is the legal invoice for payment. $269. That's got to be the cheapest I've seen. <laughs> I'm trying to get those down a little bit. Yeah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do I have a motion? I'll move to approve consent agenda items 6.1 through 6.11 as identified in the uh, agenda. Support. Okay, moved by Scott, supported by Jerry. Is there any discussion? I, I talked to Mike about the uh, scissor lift and just want to make sure that we had safety training and that went, that went along with that, but uh, he assured us that they had great safety training planned. things on that so all right is there any other comments all right at this time all those in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 opposed aye. all right consent agenda passed next on is board of education matters presentations to the board for information and mike <coughs> we do our shining stars shining stars and earlier in the day they told me how to pronounce this and i hope i don't pronounce this wrong jennifer because i think i forgot jennifer brennis is our first shiny star did i say it right all right. Jennifer attended Midland Public Schools as a, as a student and as a Midland High graduate. She earned a bachelor's degree from Alma College in Spanish and a master's degree from Central Michigan in 2002. Jennifer began her MPS career in 1998 as a full-time elementary Spanish teacher. Through the years, Ms. Brennis has taught Spanish at Chestnut Hill, Adams, Northeast, East Lawn, and Woodcrest. In 2011, she had an elementary Spanish teacher consultant for the Midland Public Schools to her responsibilities. In 2014, Jennifer became the teacher leader for elementary Spanish. In addition to her teaching responsibilities, Jennifer provides leadership for PDs, curriculum revisions, PYP implementation, technology integration, and more. Jennifer was nominated for the Shining Star by an MPS colleague. Here are some of her comments. Ms. Brennis currently teaches 38 sections, 38 sections of elementary Spanish at Chestnut Hill and is an elementary teacher leader for MPS. Senora Brennis travels to each classroom, delivers her Spanish lessons with all of her teaching materials on a cart. I probably need some Spanish <laughs> lessons. <laughs> she volunteered her time this summer to attend 5D plus training to prepare herself to help teachers get a better understanding of new teacher evaluation tool. Most recently, she designed printed 
framed and hung the Chestnut Hill PYP program of inquiry written by grade level teachers in the Chestnut Hill Main Library. Her colleagues appreciate her work, dedication, and professionalism. Congratulations, Jennifer. And our second shining star is Mike Mogenberg. My mic's coming up, let me read about him. Mike was hired in September of 1990 as a custodian with Midland Public Schools. When Mike began his career, he was uh, with Mission Midland National Guard 146 Reserve Unit. Shortly after that, if you recall, Desert Storm, Operation mm -hmm. Desert Shield, Desert Storm occurred in the spring of 1991. He, Mike was um, sent to Iraq? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, Iraq. excuse me. Spring of 1991, we returned to work as custodian at Jefferson Middle School. In 2000, Mike began a new position as head custodian at Adams Elementary School. In 2001, Mike was promoted to position manager of buildings and grounds. In 2003, Mike's National Guard Reserve Unit was again mobilized, and he returned to active duty in Iraq in this, until the spring of 2004. With MPS reorganization and consolidation of positions in 1415, Mike's title and responsibility changed to Director of Facilities and Operations, the position Mike currently holds. Mike was nominated by, by Shining Star by an MPS colleague. Here are some of his comments. Mike routinely goes above and beyond whenever my staff or I work with him. He works around our weird schedules when necessary and keeps my team and equipment that we maintain at the forefront of his planning so that is not overlooked. Mike comes in early every day, but if we need him in meetings at the end of the day, he is there and never complains. Great job, Mike. Congratulations, Mike. Our next presentation is our robotics team from Northeast. You know we have high school ones. Sometimes our middle school ones get overlooked. Northeast here tonight, and Mr. DeBoyer will introduce who he has with him tonight. Thank you. <laughs> we have one of your students. I was just going to say, I'm one of They'll see it on the TV. <laughs> Challenge program. So First Tech Challenge is part of a progression of programs from FIRST, and FIRST is an acronym standing for, for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. 
And so FIRST has a whole suite of programs to engage students at all grade levels. Um, so down at the lower elementary levels, uh, for first and third grade, we have Junior First Lego League, which is intended to let them use Lego models to um, present ideas. They have First Lego League for the late elementary now, which is again the Lego robotics, small plastic robots. Now here in the middle school, we have First Tech Challenge, which is making medium-sized 18-inch by 18-inch by 18-inch uh, metal robots with Android devices for brains, and it's based on a kit they can use. Um, kind of think of a, an erector set on steroids, if you will. And then I think you're all very familiar with the high school level FRC, First Robotics Competition, and that's for, again, for high school, and they build very large robots um, pretty much from scratch. Yep. Okay, thank you, sorry. Okay, so this year, actually last season, as we were getting our season off the ground, we were um, approached by an organization called First Great Lakes Bay Region, you're probably familiar with them, um, and they told us of changes coming to the program. They, um, first in Michigan, wanted the middle school programs to move out of First Lego League and into First Tech Challenge, leaving First Lego League for the elementary, um, First Tech Challenge in middle school, and again, um, making that pipeline all the way on up to the high school first robotics competition. So um, they made us aware of it and told us that they would help fund it, fund it, getting us there, and that money ultimately came from Dow Chemical. Um, so we gave our team the choice. It's like, okay, we have another year. Do you want to do First Lego League again, which we know real well, or do you want to take on this new challenge? And the team eagerly said, we want to take on that new challenge. So that was our first year of the new First Tech Challenge program, and we were expecting to use the Lego Mindstorms brains that we were familiar with. And First Tech Challenge said, oh, by the way, we're going to change the technology this year. And so they upgraded the technology, leaving the Lego Mindstorms behind. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we use um, Android devices for brains. And you can use the Java programming language to program these brains. So these are two real-world technologies that students are getting exposed to through this program now. So that's a very good thing. And some additional benefits we got from, we and the community got from us moving up to the program. And it wasn't just us, by the way, it was all middle school teams took advantage of this opportunity at this time. Um, so we had our first Lego League practice table and our full robot kit that we didn't need anymore. We're trying to figure out what are we going to do with this. So several of us, most of the team came from Chestnut Hill. So we approached Chestnut Hill and said, hey, how would you guys like to have a first Lego League team? And the PTO there re eagerly embraced that. And so it's kind of cool we were able to backfill the first Lego League program with a team to take the place that we left behind. Uh, then we also, our team went and presented at a table at the first, I'm sorry, the first Lego League competition in Freeland so that the kids in the first Lego League competition could see what's coming for, what's waiting for them when they get into middle school. And lastly, we went up to Beaverton and presented to three seventh grade science classes there about robotics and FTC. And those students were very, very excited by what they saw. And now they're working with their teacher to, um, hopefully create one or more teams up there where they currently don't have any involvement in these programs. Okay, so how'd our season go? Well, the team embraced the challenges well. They had many opportunities to overcome challenges. Um, we might see some of them tonight when we do our demo here. We'll see how that goes. Um, at the competition, they performed very well. They ended up being on the uh, three-team alliance and took second place in the overall competition, so we were pretty happy with our rookie year performance. And yeah, that's a picture of the team with their second place medals. I'd like to recognize our team sponsors. <coughs> um, I already mentioned that uh, Dow Chemical through First Great Lakes Bay Region provided us the bulk of the funds we needed to get into the new program. Uh, the Midland Area Community Foundation Youth Gives Grant also provided us additional needed funding. And then Next Year Automotive has been a long-term longtime sponsor of the First Lego League program, uh, supporting virtually all the First Lego League teams in the area. And we left that program behind and moved into First Tech Challenge, and they extended their financial support into that program as well, for example, providing our t-shirts. <laughs> so thank you to our sponsors. And I'd like to recognize our team members. Last season, we had um, team members Charlotte Adrian, Alex Ernst, Noah Haynes, Keaton Hawking, Josh Howery, Zach Levert, Sam Longlet, Ryan Pelletier, Drew Sheffer, and Nathan Witt. For this upcoming season, we have Charlotte Adrian, Lane Butler, Matt Crowley, Odin Drake, Ben Frame, Keaton Hawking, Xander Holland, Zach Levert, Jake Ulrich, and Joey Pelletier. 
We also have some members that graduated off of last year's team coming back as student mentors. Those are Noah Haynes, Ryan Pelletier, and Drew Sheffer. And that's all we have other than a, we'd like to give you a quick demo of our robot and answer any questions that you might have. So team, if you'd like to come out from behind the screen. <laughs> Guys, come on up, stand, stand up here while we're, can't? Oh, well, all right. You should. So do you have any questions while they're uh, <laughs> finishing getting the robot ready? <laughs> I, I'll wait for you to be done. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Well, we can talk to them. Like come on out, guys. <laughs> guys, come on to the... Keaton? <laughs> <laughs> come on up here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, when you answer questions, please speak to me in English. Okay. So what was it that you had to do during the competition? Like, what was the programming challenge? Um, the last, the, what was that last part of your question? I couldn't. Oh, what during the competition? What was your programming challenge? Like, what did you um, have the robot it, do? Well, what we originally aimed it to do was essentially everything on the field. Unfortunately, due to the limitations of the robot itself, we couldn't do all the things that we hoped to do, so we settled for doing the scoop, which is on there, to collect as much debris as possible. Something that most of the other teams that we found out quickly did not have the capability to do as easily as us. Uh, so you must have been a uh, favorite in an alliance. <laughs> <laughs> you could pick. <coughs> How are the controllers connected or interfaced with the, with the robot? Oh, um, they're usually connected to um, ZTE Samsung phones, which we use, um, which we input a program into to control the robot and use it wirelessly. So what are some, of the, some new skills or things you learned through this whole process? Like all of us, I think as a team, we learn like how to pr use some different programs and some different skills of that comes with building a, a robot. Did, did any of you actually write code? Um, did you? Well, <laughs> at least those two did. <laughs> <laughs> we were part of the build team. <laughs> How do, you, how do you guys function together at a competition? Is it like a, a pit crew where you have um, drivers? There is a pit crew. Okay. Uh, all right, so most of the time the, uh, the build team normally is responsible for any mishaps that we might have during a competition. Uh, we'll put the, essentially the pieces back together and get it hooked up for the next round. Okay. How do you determine who does what on the team? Oh, um, we... Well, to start off, we had just done whatever at first, and then we found out that some people were good at this, well, better than others at this, at least, and we put them to that task. They grew in that little area and helped push it all along. No. How, how long did um, your team have to build this? Did, have this, did you get the specification or the idea and then have X number of weeks um, like I know the high school team does? Um, we have a, well at least the the season to build is three months mm -hmm. and we normally meet around once maybe twice a week. How many how many code adjustments did you have to do? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you go about learning how to code then? Or was it a skill you already had? Well, one thing, um, Coach Pelletier really helped us a lot because he's like a software developer at Dow, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think the internet is our friend as well. Okay. Fascinating. Did you learn anything from uh, other teams that you, you watched or uh, competed against? Um, yeah, we went to a competition to observe and watch the other teams. So we learned a lot about how the competition works and the different um, jobs that we have to have on the team. So that's where we learned about having the build team, the 
pit crew and the driver team. So, yeah, we do learn a lot from other teams. Who are your allies? Um, I can't remember exactly where they were from, but it was two different people. Harvard Beach. Harvard Beach oh. and another um, team that and, we met at competition. And how does that process work? I mean, you, you show up, these, and I see it happen at competitions, but I'm, you know, I'm up watching from stands, and I see these alliances form. Uh, is it everybody going out and talking to everybody and deciding who's who I want to gang up with and don't want to gang up with? Yeah, we definitely have to like build relationships with other people. We have to see what their skill set is and what our skill set is, and if we're going to collide, trying to do the same things and trying to get as maximum amount of points as we can. I'm interested to know how um, how you decided to go to Beaverton and Freeland and and share the program. What was that all about? Yeah, it wasn't so much a decision on our part as it was invitations were were made available. Um, in fact, it was through the charge, I believe, both times. You know, they're very well established in the community, and others who wanted to learn about robotics programs contacted them, and then they said, "Hey, you know what? That's middle school. Why don't we get a middle school team to go up there and and present?" So, um, and the first Lego League, I, we were approached by our next year sponsor who said, hey, you know, you guys are in that new program. Why don't you come and tell the first Lego League people about it? So it w there were some good opportunities to spread the, spread the word. Very nice. So uh, I don't know what grade you're in, uh, assuming some of you may be eighth graders. Will, y will, you do this, will you do this next year, the high school level? Next year we'll be moving on to the next competition level, which is mm -hmm. FRC. First Robotics Competition. Yep, understand. And so that's a whole different competition. Different robots, bigger robots. But um, you'll you'll do it personally, you'll get involved again. That's what I'm yep, asking. Yes, definitely. Okay. And then are you a mentor then a high school mentor? Yes. Okay. All right. And so we have uh, how many three from middle school and one high school mentor? Yeah, here, well, here tonight we have one, one continuing middle school student on our team next year. Okay. Um, the other three are graduating on to FRC, yep. okay. and, and some are coming back as mentors for the FTC team. Okay, Perfect. very nice. good. Very good. Very nice. Love it. Love it. How big can the teams be? How many students? <coughs> that, that's a great question, because the high school team, I think the size is infinite. Um, I don't think there is any limit to it. But at uh, the First Tech Challenge level, we are, there's a hard limit of 15, but a highly advised limit of 10, just because of the size of the robot, how many people you can have working around it, the number of jobs you have available, and, well, let's be honest, the amount of supervision needed for this age level. <laughs> so, um, it's, it, 10 is a good number. Okay. okay. Do you suspect, do you suspect going forward from what you've seen of your classmates, et cetera, do you think there'd be enough interest that you'll have to have second teams and things of like that if you're going to be limited to 10 to 15? Are you, are you seeing that kind of interest starting to brew? We, we've considered, uh, this year in particular, we, um, <coughs> the previous season we just kind of had a team from our first Lego League and we graduated into this. Yeah. This year we sent out a school-wide invitation and I was concerned what was going to happen. You know, we were prepared to, to tell people, it's like, okay, great, everyone wants to be involved, we need more parents to step forward too. Um, you really don't have to have any special skills to do this. Anybody can coach a team. So we were prepared if we had enough demand that we were going to create more teams. Um, because I believe presently funding is still available to start new teams. Okay. So um, that was the plan. It turned out we have exactly enough for this year's team this time. Um, after our team roster solidified, I did get some more interest. So I've got a waiting list. Um, if that gets big enough, we'll think about starting another team. Perfect. And what would the time commitment be for a coach? Uh, a lot of time. <laughs> um, it, it, it can vary, but I mean, we during the preseason we're meeting uh, for a couple hours every week or every other week or so. During the season, we last year we met twice a week for, I think it was two hours a meeting, and we decided that was not enough. So it is a pretty good time commitment, but you don't really have to have special skills because one of the uh, core values of the FTC program is we all learn together, the adults and students as well. Now, you go through all this work, how many competitions do you get to go to? Um, an FTC team can go to up to two competitions. Okay. Generally, you're required to go to one um, as a, a requirement for your grants. Um, 
and then you can go to one more and the, your best performance can enable you to move on to the state level. Okay. But those competitions do fill up very quickly. We wanted to go to a second one, but we couldn't get into one that fit our schedule. Hmm. Now, do you get all of the um, raw materials that you need to build a, a robot in a box and you just build that or can you add your own creativity? Yes, yes to both. Um, you get a kit that you can build the robot from. All these metal parts came from that kit. Um, but then you can add on because the team really, really wanted to build a, a cool scoop out in front there to handle that debris that Keaton was talking about. Um, but when we built it out of the metal parts from the kit, it got too heavy. Mm -hmm. And so they brainstormed and came up with alternate ideas. They ended up with this very simple plastic scoop built with um, anything you can buy off the shelf is okay to use. Uh, there are some other limitations like no liquids, no um, anything dangerous, stuff like that. But, but pretty much anything you want to add on, you can. Are you allowed to use a 3D printer? To Indeed you are. Um, yes, you can use a 3D printer. Um, we um, acquired one, not the team, but we, we now have access to one we can use. Um, so we're looking forward to exploring those options this season. Very good. Do you guys like it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. much. Thanks for your volunteering. Yes. Speaking of volunteering, perfect segue. Yes. <laughs> so April, April is volunteer month and we would like to uh, vol uh, recognize our volunteers and so if you recall we did this for the first time last school year and recognized them at a board meeting as well. So we've asked our building principals to uh, turn in their volunteer for the year and we are going to go through the list. Well, I'll begin to read them and Cindy can put them up later um, so we can move on with the meeting. So for Adams, we have Mrs. Cindy, and I may say her name wrong, Wairoski, volunteers two to three days a week at Adams and has, four, has, has for five years. Cindy helps by running centers, reading to students, working on students one-to-one, -one, <coughs> small groups, and much more. Chestnut Hill, we have Dr. Greg Wright. He has volunteered as a hallway hero at Chestnut Hill for two years. He, is, he assists students in lunch in lunchroom. And I think you'll notice a common theme here, how long some of these people do. This isn't a one-time shot thing for all of them. Carpenter, we have Mr. Fred Kelly, started volunteering at Chippewasi more than 10 years wow. ago wow. and began volunteering at Carpenter when the two buildings merged. Mr. Kelly volunteers in many of the classrooms weekly, spending three to four days a week at Carpenter. And again, how long, wow. how often wow. they're doing this. Um, East Lawn, Mr. Dave Shannon, began working with Longview students and continued his science volunteering with students at East Lawn. Mr. Shannon is one of East Lawn's science guys who helps extend science projects, helps students collect data, and assist the teachers by enriching science lessons. And Dave's also gonna help us with our STEM, STEM school. So. Mm -hmm. Plymouth, uh, we have Miss Sherry Grassman, volunteers in each of her children's classroom weekly. She helps with science activities, reads with students, and helps with whatever needs to be done. Sherry is also a very active member of the Plymouth PTO. And at Siebert, in, uh, in addition to being an active member of the Siebert PTO, Ms. Kimberly Scott has organized the Siebert Science Fair for the past five years. Kim organizes every detail of the Science Fair night, and if you've attended that one, it's a pretty nice Science Fair there. Woodcrest, Ms. Cindy Cummings has volunteered countless hours at Woodcrest for 15 years at school book fairs, as a room parent in the school library with the AR program and much more. And at Jefferson we have Miss Karen Klazerski has volunteered at Jefferson for more than three years. She has been president of the Jefferson and Parent Advisory Council for the past three years and has led many different initiatives. And in Northeast we have Mr. Rob Schneider who is an outstanding hallway hero at Northeast after working third shift 
This one's interesting. After wow. working third shift, he spends most mornings at Northeast interacting with students <laughs> as a hallway hero and making their day just a little brighter. When there are after school parties for the students, Mr. Schneider has been known to cut his sleeping time in short to come in and help chaperone. And at H.H. Dow High School, we have Mr. Charles ne Nielsen, who works with students in the chemistry lab. Mr. Nielsen has worked with students one or two days a week, sometimes all day, for the past five, five years. In addition, his volunteering has expanded to several after-school activities. And at Midland High, Ms. Shannon Kruger has been volunteer for at Midland High School for more than six years and has been president of the Music Boosters for the past three years, giving hundreds of hours of volunteer time to the music program. So we'd like to thank all of our volunteers. And as you know, um, we, and I think we saw tonight with the volunteers of the robotics as well, there's so much more that goes on than just us educators touching these children that make them so successful. So we appreciate everything everyone does. Thank you, thank you. And my last recognition of the night before I turn it back to the board meeting is we have two board members who have earned honors through MASB for um, the CBA courses they have taken. And we have um, Vice President Singer who has now earned her level two award of merit. So congratulations, Pam. And sitting next to her, we have Lynn Baker. And if I read this right, Lynn, and I find my spot here, Lynn has now earned level three award of distinction. Whoa. So as you know, it takes a lot of commitment to be a board member as well. Probably fits into that volunteer category. And so we thank you for all your time as well. Do I have another one? Do I really? <laughs> <laughs> Safety award. Yeah. You, you, oh, you have to tell me where I'm at on that one. Safety <laughs> awards. I do have that one. Too many, too many awards tonight. I can't keep up. <laughs> um, so <coughs> each year, our Midland Public Schools recognizes the buildings that have no safety courts for the years. Um, we have five this year that we'd wow. like to recognize in doing so. The Administration Center, the Bus Garage, Ooh. Plymouth Elementary, the Science Resource Center, and Woodcrest Elementary have earned the Safety Excellent Award We'll, those awards will be presented to them individually, but we want to recognize them here tonight. Very good. Pretty impressive with the Great. bus garage. Yeah. 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 Very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up is um, presentation to the Board for Action. Are you going to use two mics? Um, <laughs> do I have more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not do. keeping up here. Okay. This is. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we thought you just wanted to. Action <laughs> item. I wasn't <laughs> thinking <laughs> seeing the presentation. You threw me off on that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I see uh, Mr. Davis has even have his right color on tonight, which is, which is a transition for him yeah. after many, many years. So. <laughs> and as you know, um, we're asking you to take action tonight on two new principles at um, two of our largest buildings in our district. So it's a pretty important night tonight. And uh, Mr. Poole will move from Jefferson Middle School. And if you recall, Steve uh, was previously a principal at Central Middle School and assistant principal at Midland High. Am I leaving something out? I am, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Northeast, somewhere in there, right? I thought it was. I was going to. And so Steve uh, has been around the district, and he will now assume the leadership of H.H. Dow High School on July 1st. And uh, Ted Davis will be leaving Dow High to assume the leadership of Jefferson Middle School. Um, and Ted has spent the Midland portion of his career at Dow High, so it'll be quite a change for Ted, but he's at the school that feeds Dow High. Ted has also served on administrative roles in Indiana and taught in Florida. Yeah. Like that's correct as well. So congratulations to both guys. I'm very excited to see both um, um, grow into these roles, and I'm sure they will do an outstanding job for mm -hmm. us. Pretty key roles for you. Thank you. Would you like to say anything? Well, I would say, do we need to actually vote on this? Yeah, you need to take action. All right. Why don't we take I'm, action? I'm not voting until I hear Oh, you want to hear them? Yeah. I'll let him talk first. Biggie is putting them out. Okay. I'm going to vote we'll no. Okay, we'll let you talk first, Steve, and then we'll take action. <laughs> Are we going to set the clock? <laughs> Five minutes to start. I am an educator, so um, I need to thank a lot of people first. My, uh, my wife was here, Tracy, and my daughter, Madison. And they had to go pick up my son, Jackson, who is uh, going to umpire school. Oh, wow. I need to thank them first because obviously it was a family decision. Um, you come in on high school principals, it's going to be a lot of time. I know that for being at the high school in the past. Um, 
very excited uh, it's a new challenge it's a fantastic building uh, but i'm also leaving a great building and it's going to be a great hands of ted uh, as well so um, thank you very much for this honor and i thank all of you that are here for giving me this opportunity i think uh, the challenge is there i'm ready for it and uh, we're ready to go i just uh, it was kind of fun to, to think you know next fall another building yeah i've been to a lot of them in the district um, but I'm very excited to make Dow High School the best high school in the state of Michigan. Great. Uh, well, thank you. I guess I'll vote yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so should we vote on it? Well, I was going to say yes. Yeah. Want to take a vote on Steve's or and then yeah. have yeah. Ted? Yeah. We'll, we'll, take, we'll, take <laughs> we'll, we'll take a vote on Steve's. We'll take a vote on Steve's. I'll tell you, the comment my daughter made about you was that you made such an effort when you came to Jefferson when she was in eighth grade to get to know all the students. Oh, that's so great. It's not, it's not as on. easy that, to do with, with one grade, but the eighth graders I know very well. And it's a fantastic group, so I'm really excited to take them to, to Dow High School and see them. And uh, relationships are very important to me, mm -hmm. so I'm glad that we put our time in. Yes. <laughs> All right. At this time, if I <coughs> have a I move uh, approval of 8.1, Dr. Poole, the Dow High principal. I'll support that. All right. Moved by Gary, supported by Yvonne. Is there any discussion? I'm excited to see uh, you join the team over there. Lead the charge. <laughs> oh. Ditto. Yeah. Ditto. Thank you. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Both well. <laughs> you know, if both of them had the right colors, yeah. I didn't know yeah. Steve yeah. switched yeah. colors yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for me, it's uh, the complete wardrobe shortage. I'm sure <laughs> 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 probably go two straight months and wear nothing but Dow High gear. So uh, for me, it's a little change and uh, really looking forward to it. I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity to, to be a building principal, get in the assistant role. Um, and so uh, just really excited about that, about that change. It is a, a little bit bittersweet for me because Dow High is a, a place that will always hold something special in my heart because that's where it started, that's where my kids are going, that's where they're graduating from. Mm -hmm. So uh, a little bittersweet, but I am really excited about the opportunity to go to Jefferson. Great school, great teachers, great students, um, and, and great parents there. So really looking forward to the, the, the new adventure that, that's going to be over at Jefferson. So I would like to just thank everybody, um, you know, all the mentors along the way, that have had the opportunity, you know, Pam Castle has I've worked with her the last few years, has played a, a big part in the development, and also, you know, Jen Goodall, when I first got here, was, was very good for me as well, and then, of course, Mike and Brian and, and Bob have all had a uh, hand in that as well, so I do appreciate that, <coughs> and, and thanks for the opportunity and, and, and taking a chance on the assistant principal to, to move into that role, so I am extremely grateful, so I uh, look forward to it. Thank you. Well, I move approval of 8.2 to have Ted be principal at Jefferson Middle School. Support. Support. Everyone supported. <laughs> 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 Gary moved and Pam supported. So, yeah, we'll miss you at Dow High. Your dedication is very every noticed. Time the board every, time <laughs> every time I'm there, you're there. <laughs> 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 and I'm sure you're there a lot, lot of times I'm not there. So, yes, good. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> the uh, next item is the Midland County track. And I think um, FFO members are aware we've worked on this for a while through the bond. We um, have an issue with the track now. Um, sections pulling up uh, out of it. And so we've certainly got our life out of it. Um, Bob pulled some data on that. I think um, 12, 14 years ago yeah. um, was the last. My first year on the board, we approved mm -hmm. it. So yeah. it's been 13 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this was a little bit out of sequence on the bottom. We had to pull it ahead because of the condition. So it wasn't going to be resurfaced until we did the turf. And the turf isn't scheduled until 2019 or 20. Um, but we're going to have to pull this ahead to get that track back in the condition we need to. Um, so it's going to be um, a few years down the road when we do do the turf, and we're going to have to be pretty gentle at that point in time when we get across that in order to do the turf. It's ideal to do them both at the same time, but just 
it hasn't worked out that way. And so you have the um, low bidder there in front of you. So I move approval of the um, track resurfacing at uh, the community center at the community stadium, eight point three. Bart. I no. volunteered out there a lot and have seen the peeling up of the track and um, I'm glad that we were able to get 13 years out of it. I think that's a, a, a great amount of years to get through and uh, it'd be nice to get a resurface out there so we can host events. Yeah, just being the, my first year on the board when we had the sinking fund and we approved that, it's kind of, Ugh, we're leading with, with tracks and, and, and turf. I just remember the numbers were roughly thirty thousand dollars a year saved with the turf, with the field maintenance, because you always had to redo the field, and uh, the track was on in the same condition it is now. It had to be done, so we did the turf at the same time. Mike's point, and to hear that turf's going to go sixteen years uh, by going to three more years, and the track went thirteen years. Yeah. Uh, we certainly spent that money wisely and got our money's worth out of that. So hopefully we'll do so again. Very frequently. It gets a lot of use. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. <coughs> and just to point out, that is being done, I think, during the summer. That will not be done for this track season. So I don't want to miss right. the opportunity. Correct. All right. Next up, we have requests to address the board. There have been no formal hearings <laughs> requested. Is there anyone? Looks <laughs> 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 like it. One of these days, Roger's going to pick us up. Yeah. One of these days. <laughs> 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 All right, moving on then to the finance facilities and operations. So, first up is the FFO study committee um, minutes. Who has I those to read? Because I think they're in my stack. Okay, yeah. I was going to say because Jerry was I missed the meeting. unable okay. to be at yep. the meeting, and I don't have them in my All right, stack. I have them tonight. <coughs> All right, um, members present, Angela, myself, Pam for Jerry, uh, Mike and Bob Cooper, and then Daryl from Barton Mellow. And on the bond update, Mr. Dumbrell from Barton Mellow reviewed with the committee the progress and the timeline of current projects. He also discussed future Series 1 bond projects, including the resurfacing of the track, uh, secure entrances in all school buildings, elementary school renovations and technology purchases, finance operations portion of the meeting, Mr. Cooper members discuss the following January and February financials, paper purchase for the 15 uh, 16 school year, beginning of 16 17 school year, increase of student breakfast and lunch prices, which I think is further down our agenda tonight, and uh, possible topics and areas for board budget workshop on April 18th before the regular meeting. Next being scheduled for Monday, May 9th. Um, under uh, 10.2, we do have a meal price increase recommendation. Um, you can see that it's really due to two different reasons. One is uh, each year the food services has to, to do a calculation with the state called a paid lunch equity, a PLE. And, and that determines for them that there's equity in the pricing between the, if you will, the amount of money the federal government's giving for free, and then of course uh, the reduced lunches and what a full lunch would be. Mm -hmm. When they figure that formula out, it determines the price that you're supposed to be charging. And that can vary from year to year, and they give you X amount of time to get to that price. Um, this is a little bit higher than what we would do, but otherwise uh, if you cut it just to the exact amount, uh, how we'll be back here every year with the uh, coming back. So we thought we'd go higher. We did check around with the district around us. Buildings is just in the ballpark of everyone else. So it's not like the prices is out very far. If you read down through it, I guess the other thing I should mention here is it's also uh, been more of a problem, especially on breakfast and the, and the lunches. But the um, new regulations for the healthy kids uh, lunches, the amount of, if you will, vegetables and fruit, which aren't necessarily easy to put. In fact, they're not required both of those in a lunch. That's caused some of the prices to go up and very hard to meet the nutritional guidelines that you need to meet for breakfast meals. So you'll see that the elementary um, recommendation increases is for both elementary breakfast and lunch is 20 cents per meal. 
Um, that raises the price of breakfast to one sixty an hour sixty and two fifty for the lunch. And then our secondary um, price increase for breakfast and lunch is twenty five cents uh, per meal. Uh, that takes the secondary school breakfast to one ninety and the base uh, secondary lunch to two seventy five. You have to increase adult prices proportionally. That's part of the federal regulation. They have to pay more than any student uh, would pay um, with the reimbursement rate. Does not affect the reduced lunches, which continue to be the 40 cents, or the three lunches, which are free. So we are recommending that we approve those uh, price increases. And would you like us to get to the lunch? <coughs> yes. All right. Uh, I move approval of 10.2. Support. Move by Jerry, support by Patrick. <coughs> Is there any discussion on this? I'm going to make a comment. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people come to me often, and, and they're always amazed when I tell them how constrained we are on what we can do in school by state government, by federal government. You, you, you wouldn't be amazed. I'm sitting here looking at there's two acts that tell us how to price meals. <laughs> I mean, it, I can't even talk to my public that we have the unilateral ability to price meals. We, we, we don't even have that. And there's at least two acts that I know that are to demonstrate tonight to do that. So to the public, I'm just venting a frustration. <laughs> Please keep calling, keep talking to us, but just realize it's amazing how much other levels of government have gotten involved in managing the school district that it gets down to the pricing to the nickel <coughs> of, a, of a meal. End of diatribe. <laughs> right. I must say, when I look at these and I know how much food costs, it just still very is a very, very yes. reasonable I can't even for. buy blueberries for that price. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, under 10.3, we are to our gifts now, and for the first ones are for information. Um, we have gifts totaling just shy of 16,300. So as always, a very impressive list. Don't forget, if you're watching on TV, we run all the specific gifts and the people we should give credit to there. We didn't get them recognized, but you'll see this time that a uh, vast majority of them are usually from some organization associated with the school, so PTO, teacher clubs, Etc. And, and you'll actually see the one uh, donation in there for a Lego Robotics team at Northeast from First of Michigan there. Or they're from the Community Foundation, which are uh, a lot of the community gives uh, contributions to Dow Chemical, uh, where our kids are doing something to get that money to those <coughs> kids. So you see uh, quite a list. Um, also from the Midland Community Foundation, their Youth uh, Action Center uh, committee committee has, uh, has granted us quite a bit there. So, like I said, uh, 16,300 and we're very appreciative of the efforts of everybody that have, have given us those gifts. Under 10.4 though, because of the total of those uh, two different gifts, um, we do need your approval there. The gifts together, uh, just shy of 11,000. Uh, first one, $5,491 for 3D printers from the JPAC, the Jefferson Parent Advisory Committee. So they have some 3D printers there. And the Time and School Board that just mentioned earlier for SWIM, um, the Dahai Boosters Club with the 5500 which isn't the total cost of the scoreboard. It's just a, it's a, it's a major part of it, but uh, they did raise money in other ways um, uh, internally and from SWIM teams. So 10.4 would require your action to approve accepting those two gifts. I move to approve item 10.4. Big thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We love the new swim scoreboard. Three <laughs> D printers. How about yeah, three D printers. Okay, love the new three D printers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in middle school. Right. In middle school. I know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. We didn't win any scooters when I was in middle school. So it's just a small thing. So okay. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. And, and that's okay, Angela. We didn't have the computers didn't exist when I was in middle school. <laughs> 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 they did typewriters. <laughs> <laughs> the, like big, the 
big old mainframes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, just take a whole building and put one in. Yeah. My first language yeah. is Elgol. That will throw everybody's okay, blessing. There you go. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> moving on to human resources. And I think Mike, Me. you handled it. Yep. Earlier this month, we uh, had a retired employee pass away, and we'd like to extend our deepest sympathy to the family of Miss Laura Hardy. She passed away on April 5. Miss Hardy was a bus driver with Midland Public Schools for 17 years, retiring in 've never started and I have nothing well, to say <laughs> except mm -hmm. thank you to the donors and uh, <coughs> and the volunteers I mean that's that's things that don't have to happen and this community makes happen and both are extremely valuable to us thank you on May 12th at 410 we have the Gerstacker uh, awards and I uh, just want everybody to know that's happening and come on out and support our teachers and retirees um, also, uh, I'm interested in keeping an eye on what's going on with third grade reading uh, requirements through the, the Senate and the House. And uh, right now it looks like the Senate is, uh, had, had put in a piece about having parents have a say on whether their child would be held back or not. Um, but we will see where that all goes. Um, I thought the budget workshop uh, this evening went very well, and uh, uh, kudos to Bob for such a good presentation and a lot of uh, work for preparing that. So I feel uh, great about where we are and wh where we come from and uh, look forward to the future. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Seems like it's been a long time. Um, I just really would like to um, say how much I appreciated having my kids come tonight and their, and their mentoring coaches. It's just so exciting to see what's going on behind the scenes and, and with our students and see their enthusiasm. I'm just amazed and these young, young um, students that they're programming, you know, they're programming these um, robots, which I don't understand a thing <coughs> about. But, um, but it just kind of leads into when you talk about volunteer month. Mike and all the different people that volunteer from their their uh, coaches and then um, as I was reading through the paper all the the ads the drawn ads and so working with the different um, businesses and, and doing that and um, what else did I have here just all the, all the things that we have volunteers for uh, another thing I saw was the young and was it young entrepreneurs Academy we were talking about those kids doing amazing things and going on to these um, <coughs> competitions and without volunteers and without community support our kids just wouldn't have the great opportunities that they have so um, thank you to all of all of them and I just wanted to um, mention the upcoming high school musical and once again you know community support and helping each other out. They'll be at Bullet Creek this year, which is very generous of, of Bullet Creek to be able to host our, our two high school musicals. Uh, <coughs> Del High will be doing Beauty and the Beast and uh, Midland High, the Putnam County Spelling Bee, and they always do an incredible job. And again, lots of volunteers and staff who put in lots of extra hours. And uh, I guess lastly, congratulations to Jennifer and Mike on the Shining Stars and to uh, Steve and Ted for for stepping up and being our being new principals and they'll have lots of ex exciting uh, adventures in the future. That's it. Scott. Uh, just uh, everything I had noted down had been addressed, uh, but we really can't thank our volunteers and our donors enough. Um, we we benefit <coughs> so much from the charity and goodwill of this community. Uh, it's it's mind blowing, really. Uh, and it's really refreshing to see meeting after meeting after meeting, um, just more and more outpouring of resources into helping our children um, achieve more. Uh, and talking about achieving more, um, congratulations to both of you um, oh, on your on your awards. It's, it's great to have uh, board members so dedicated and to be on the cutting edge of educational issues and to bring that back to our meetings and, and 
in four months. Um, we don't have as much time to get out to, <laughs> to the different uh, seminars. Um, it's great to have you guys and, and to be able to work with you on those things. Um, congratulations to Ted and Steve <coughs> on their new respective roles at Jefferson and Dow. And um, that's all I have. It's all been said. Um, <laughs> the volunteers and money, the gifts. Uh, I think one thing different I had to say is during the uh, robotics team tonight, hearing the students talk about strategizing who can help them best from other schools and the collaboration with team building, not just building robots, but things going on around it that I see now in the group world, building your teams and your people that work, your project management. That's mm -hmm. nice to hear those kids getting that experience at that young of an age. Um, getting Chestnut Hill and was it Beaverton involved in the next stage or getting those teams going. Yeah, <laughs> 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 with the extra time off, yeah, we'll get over there. Um, and again, the gifts, the new principles, it's all very impressive. Well, also, I also want to say a big thank you to our donors and volunteers. I'm just always amazed at the gifts given by people in this community. And one of the things I see here is some um, $575 for National Exemplary School outside letters outside letters for Chestnut Hill. I think that's awesome. <laughs> and I just want to share a little story with you. I was out walking my dog the other night and I ran into this little group of quite little girls and uh, they wanted to pet my dog and they were all excited about him. And so I was trying to talk to them and they were just saying a few things. And I asked one of them where to go to school and she said Chestnut Hill. And I said, did you know that Chestnut Hill is a national blue ribbon school? And they all just, yeah! <laughs> 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 it was very exciting to them. So it's exciting to me too. That's my school. So that's all I have to say, I guess. All right, thanks. And I want to once again, too, thank all the volunteers. And I know um, tonight we highlighted one from the schools, but you know everyone, and whether you volunteer an hour or whether you're there three days a week, everyone um, can make a difference. And no matter what your skill set is, there's somewhere that you can probably um, volunteer <coughs> and help out. We appreciate everyone that does that. Um, hopefully everyone read the Monday communication today. It was another uh, four pager, <laughs> which was excellent. You just page after page. It's just very exciting to read all the great things going on in the district and um, all the different things that our students are involved in. Just very, um, very impressive. Um, little story, as you know, my son's a senior and two days ago, um, a letter arrived in the mail and I realized the return address from, was from Adams Elementary and I thought he hasn't, I, I don't think that he's volunteered there or anything recently and it was kids handwriting, you could tell and he opened it up and it was a letter that he had written to himself in fourth grade. Oh. 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 And, and you know, and, and it just made me think, wow, for teachers to have, I mean, how many years ago was that? That was like eight years ago and for his teacher, Mrs. Waspaugh, to hang on to those letters and to mail them out to the kids and how exciting for them to get those and, and read those. And it just, I thought that's teacher dedication to have them do that and then to eight years later follow through on sending those out. And just what, what a neat thing that was for, for all of us to read through it and see how well he spelled <laughs> back then. <laughs> <laughs> what Pokemon game was his favorite? And that, but I just, you know, I, I immediately thought, oh, yes, Mrs. Wasabaugh, fourth grade, and wow, she hung on to those and sent those out. Um, and then the last thing, thank you of the budget workshop today. Um, I think it was really good to note that our goal here is to have a balanced budget. Um, can't keep spending more than we bring in. No one can do that, and um, everyone has worked very hard to do that. And so just once again, very appreciative of everybody's sacrifices that have been made to get us where we hopefully will be by the end of this year. And then few uh, comments for me. Um, hot topic lately has been staffing, if you've noticed the Friday letters and those type of things. Um, we have a lot of teachers to replace. We have a lot of administrators to replace. We um, moved with our first two tonight on the administrative side. Um, the good news is lots of interest. So we have um, 500 um, teachers coming to our May 24th teacher job fair. Um, we've been to dozens of uh, teacher job fairs at universities. We have lots of good cam candidates brought back. So I think we're in a and attracting really well on those applicants. Many of our new hires at the elementary level will um, be hired one year at another school and they'll be transferred to the new STEM school. So we'll be looking for those 
elementary teachers with a, a little bit of a STEM emphasis as well as we look at them. The system principals positions, we have over 150 who have applied for uh, one of the um, four, now four uh, uh, um, middle school principals jobs, um, five internal candidates, lots of outside candidates. Um, so it, it's been, we're gonna do several rounds to uh, par those numbers down. The first round is a, is a screening internally of, of the, all the applicants. The second round will be electronic one where we're gonna send out electronic one. We're gonna ask them to do an oral presentation, record that and send that back to us. And the third one will be an uh, interview in front of uh, our administrative committee. And the fourth and final uh, level would be the agenda group with the principals to, to bring those out. So we've got some work to do there. As we go forward, it'll be a little more round robin, robin since there's four of them. We'll be in a room looking at all of them for, for the prospective positions and try to figure out how that will go. We'll probably do a little bit of that with the teaching as well when we're hiring large groups of um, Spanish teachers. Why not interview them all? And we'll be hiring more um, as for MPS and then assigning them to their buildings later, where in the previous we kind of hired specifically for those positions. I think in the beginning we hire, get the pool, and then figure out where that staffing is best, best fitted as we go forward. Um, I wrote to you earlier about the Collins Street parking lot, as we are now calling it. Uh, that parking lot we found out, which was, um, as we were building Central Park, was um, part of our complex, and we had found a piece of paper, Bob found a piece of paper that said, that may not be true. We gave the, uh, par the uh, parking area back to the city when the Civic Arena was there for their use. And so I uh, met with John Lynch, John took it back, he's talked to the attorneys and that, and it looks like, um, we said, hey, we'd like that back. <laughs> 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 and John, uh, John is probably going to get the city to move that way. And um, we will allow the city now to use that um, for the events in band shelter, music shelter over there um, on weekends, evenings when we're not using. It, it works perfectly fine. No sense of both of us having a parking lot. So that is, seems to be we're working through very well. Outdoor learning spaces at Central Park. Um, those spaces were not funded through the bond. They were not funded through the STEM grants we've got, so we begin to work on those and those positions as well. We've met with Sharon Mortens from Midland Community Foundation. Sharon's a wealth of ideas and enthusiasm, and um, it looks like we're going to receive uh, a grant from there, but then some matching grant opportunities as well. So get ready. We're going to ask all of you somewhere down the road to maybe to write a check. Sharon's, uh, 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 we're going to meet with Sharon this tomorrow, and we're going to help organize ourselves a little more before we actually present what that's going to be. Um, there will be an opportunity to put your name on some stuff for sure and have that live forever over there so we can raise some more money for the <laughs> like those unique <laughs> outdoor learning spaces. And if you recall, those are really yeah. unique op opportunities out there. And the last thing I wrote you about, because it's a little bit out of order, um, we're probably going to give them the go ahead and then ask you to prove uh, post um, instead of pre um, is on the MCONET. Um, um, internet bandwidth equipment that we need and I think it's it's a story that you can understand uh, we need a lot more bandwidth bandwidth is cheap to buy but the equipment is limiting to us and we're in a consortium with our county and so um, the dollar amount there our portion would be 53,000 for the equipment the total purchase is 106 so you know it's about 60 percent 60 or 60 percent of that and that equipment will carry us out for years instead of buying and then coming back in a year and say, hey, this equipment isn't growing. You know, we're going to add um, nearly three, well, probably over 3,000 devices next year onto the thing, followed by the elementaries with another, you know, couple thousand devices. You can see where it's going to go and the amount of bandwidth we're going to gobble up, and the equipment's got to be able to harness that and work. So um, that one's out of order a little bit for you. And Yvonne and I are going to be attending Legislative Day in Lansing on Tuesday, May 31st. We're still looking for others of you that would like to join us. Um, Jerry's gone before. Um, uh, the idea is you go to some sessions, some training uh, on topics about what's going on. You have some options there, but they also bring legislators over to discuss what's going on in Lansing with school. And we know there's lots going on in Lansing with schools right now. So um, it's good to be there and get that information. Sometimes we get a chance, sometimes we don't get a chance to meet our own legislators there. Sometimes we found it easier just to meet them when they're in town. So uh, bond update, um, as you know, we've improved the Midland uh, Community Stadium track this evening. Um, we're moving along quite well at the Central Park Elementary if you haven't gone by there lately. Over 100 contractors on site. Um, I would say about half of the footings are already put in the ground for that building over there. So 
it's moving quite quickly. Um, we're expecting at any point in time here that the engineers would be out looking a little bit more at the auditorium. We are waiting on some HVAC pricing on the auditorium, so some of that equipment can it be saved, even though the the um, the source for the heat will be coming from the um, elementary school. And that if we could purchase less HVAC equipment and still do it quality, the more equipment we we have, or more dollars we have to refurbish the auditorium itself, and and that's the part really that our users are concerned about stage size sound some of those things and uh, some pretty big ticket price things and so um, in order to move forward we had to do that so we expect to go out to bid on that though by June we got tight timelines so that's gonna be move around so we auditorium we bid by June we'll have one more meeting with our users once we know what we're doing to discuss that with them as well and then um, um, all of our security entrances at our elementary schools and it sounds like two full renovation packets at two of the elementaries. Yet to be known which elementaries will be bid out as well sometime this summer to start next year. So we're, we're now moving quite quickly. That's all I have. Just over a year. Yep. Yep. It's been a year since we sold them on. I'll ask yeah. if we've had any more. <laughs> well, one year right now. And it is nice when we sit in SFL and they go through, you can see everything is staging and now, you know, yep. this is working, we're working on this piece, this is the next one, and you can see how we're just kind of continue yep. to go 